ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, the one who seeks finds, and the one who knocks, the door will be opened, or it will be opened. Or which of you, if his son asks for him for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a serpent? If you then who are evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father who is in heaven give good things to those who ask him? For most of us, what our senses sense is much easier to, to sense than what is going on in the spiritual realm. But sometimes it also seems easier to hear from the enemy than we hear from God. Sometimes it can seem the enemy is constantly in our heads. So why then at those times does it seem that God isn't speaking as much? Are we tuned in to the wrong frequency? God most definitely isn't the same as the enemy, nor does he work in the same way. His ways are so much higher than our ways and the enemy's ways. We know that the enemy has blinded the eyes of the unbeliever so they can't see the light of the gospel. But Paul prays in Ephesians and Colossians that our eyes, the church's eyes, be enlightened that we may see. So to a degree, our eyes need to be open to see what is actually happening. Reminded of the passage in 2 Kings. So he sent their horses and chariots and a great army and they came by night, this is the opposition, they came by night and surrounded the city when the servant of the man of God hmm, rose early in the morning and went out. Behold, an army with horses and chariots was all around the city. And the servant said, Alas, my master, what shall we do? He said, Do not be afraid, for those who are with us are more than those who are with them. Then Elisha prayed and said, O Lord, Please open his eyes that he may see. So the Lord opened the eyes of the young man and he saw. And behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. Our eyes can be blinded by what is in front of us so easily. As it was, they couldn't, he couldn't see, the young man couldn't see what was actually going on. He could only see what was in the physical until Elisha prayed that his eyes be opened. Any wonder why Paul says his constant prayer is that our eyes are opened. It's not just a once-off, it's a constant prayer. Continue to pray. The other side of it is People can continue to hear what the enemy says, for example, and can continue to see what he is doing. And when you do that, when people do that, they will notice more what, is going, what, what he is doing. It's not where our focus should be. It should be on God's kingdom and his righteousness. It's like if we get a new car. You know, you may have not have ever seen that particular model of car. Maybe, you might have, one or two, but you got that car and now they're everywhere. Because <laughs> you're looking for them. If we are looking at our problems, we will likely see more of them. But likewise, if we focus on God and see what He is doing, we will see and hear more what he is doing and saying. Christmas, amongst other things, is a time of giving. 
and a time where we celebrate, spend time with family and friends, exchange gifts with each other. We have presents under the tree for our kids. We do. And as with any gift you give someone, we hope they like them. If they are just left there or accepted but put aside and forgotten about, it could feel like the kids are ungrateful. But possibly more important is that the kids will never use the gift to the full potential that it has. This, um, this illustration, I'm sure, has been used over and over again. I've heard it other places, but you've got it. Yeah, anyway. You can get given a gift and you can take it as it is, probably wrapped up, and put it away and never look at it again. We never do anything with it. Which won't last in our place if something's not touched for a few weeks. It's usually gone. So, <laughs> But most houses, it might work. <laughs> and you'll never realise, if you don't open it and use it, you'll never realise the full potential of that gift. You'll never appreciate properly what that gift is. But what's the step before we unwrap the gift? And before you find, it, find out what it is and use it to its potential? You put your hands out and you receive it. Or you pick it up. This is so similar to what we need to do with the gifts from God. You might say, well, my... How my physical arm's going to reach into the spiritual and grab the gift from God? Yeah, I can understand your point. But sometimes it's a physical move and action that you actually declare and express what you're doing in the, in the spiritual. What you physically do can be an expression of what you do in the spiritual. And it's used time and time again. Jeremiah. This is what the Lord says. Go and buy a clay jar from a potter. Take along some of the elders, and I don't know what's going on with that, but anyway, take along of the, uh, some of the elders of the people, of the priests, and go to the valley of Ben Hinnom, near the entrance to the pot shed gate, pot's herd gate. There proclaim the words I tell you. Then break the jar. So he went on he, he with some words, but then break the jar. And while those with you, w those who go with you are watching, say to them, this is what the Lord Almighty says. I will smash this nation and this city just as this potter's jar is smashed. It was a prophetic act in the physical of what was going on. And Ezekiel, now, son of man, take a block of clay, put it in front of you and throw, draw the city of Jerusalem on it. Then lay siege to it. Erect siege works against it. Build a ramp up to it. Set up camps against it and put battering rams around it. Then take an iron pan, place it as an iron wall between you and the city and turn your face toward it. It will be under siege and you shall besiege it. This will be a sign to the people of Israel. And another example from the New Testament. After, this is Paul, after we had been there a number of days, a prophet named Agabus came down from Judea. Coming to over to us, he took Paul's belt, tied his own hands and feet with it and said, the Holy Spirit says, this is the way the Jewish leaders in Jerusalem will bind the owner of this belt and hand him over to the Gentiles. Why, why do this? Why have a belt from Paul tie his hands and feet with it and then say this is what's going to happen? Why wouldn't he just say your hands and feet are going to be bound? Because there's something in the act that's a prophetic declaration and a prophetic message. And it's the same with receiving a spiritual gift.
how do you envisage God giving you these gifts? And how do you envisage you receiving them? It may be a physical action. It's the same as when we take communion. Jesus died for us. And yes, if we believe in him, we will have eternal life. I'm not questioning that at all. But Jesus said himself, and unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you have no place in heaven. So, have we actually eaten his flesh and drank his blood in the physical? It's a mystery to me on, on how all that actually fits in, but I know he's not talking about his physical flesh and blood because if he was, it would have run out by now. Wouldn't be any left. I don't know how it all works, but it's more than just tokens. They're more than just representation of his body and blood as well. Uh, but every time we take communion, we are physically declaring that we are accepting the body and blood of Lord Jesus. That is the physical action, and there is power in that statement when we make it, when we take it. could be the same as we, when we receive gifts. So how do we receive them? Yes, Lord. Thank you for the gifts of knowledge. Thank you for the gifts of healing. Thank you for the gifts of prophecy. Thank you for the gifts of faith. Yes, we can have them. Yes, they are for us. And yes, we can say and declare that we accept them. But how many of us actually put out our hands and accept the gifts that are being offered? How many of us reach out and take those gifts? Lord, I receive. I receive your gifts that you are giving us. And further on, if we do take these gifts, how many of us then take it to the next stage, unwrap them, look what's inside, and use it to its full potential? You know, you may have noticed that Pete has gotten up over the last few weeks. Where is he? Gone. Doesn't matter. Pete has gotten up over the last few weeks and to act in a number of prophetic ways. And last week it was filling people with the Holy Spirit. He was saying, be filled with the Holy Spirit. In that, he is acting in a prophetic gifting. He is unwrapping and using that prophetic gift. And if it's not already one day will be to its full potential. I can tell you that there are a few testimonies that came out of last week as well as other prophetic acts that have happened here and outside of here. But Pete was using the gift he received from God. He's always had a prophetic calling and he was using the gift that God had given him. 1 Corinthians, we read, Now there are a variety of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of service, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who empowers them all in everyone. So each is given the manifestation or manifest of the Spirit for the common good. For to one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge. According to the same Spirit, another... Uh, to another, according to the same spirit, to another faith by the same spirit, probably, yeah, to another gifts of healing by the one spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another the ability to distinguish between spirits, to another various kinds of tongues, and to another the interpretation of tongues. All these are empowered by one and the same spirit, the Holy Spirit who apportions to each one individually as he wills. And then further on, so we've got Paul giving an explanation and you've got to remember that this is a letter. So in a letter, there is no chapter breaks and verse breaks. It is a, this is, he's talking about spiritual gifts and he's talking about love in the next bit and he comes back to spiritual gifts, but it's all linked in together. 
And so 1 Corinthians 14 is a continuation further on of what he was saying just before. But let two or, people, two or three prophets speak and let the others weigh what is said. If a revelation is made to another sitting there, let the first be silent. For you can all prophesy one by one so that you may learn and be encouraged. So my brothers earnestly desire to prophesy and do not forbid speaking in tongues, but all things should be done decently and in order. And as I said just before, just before this passage, Peter is talking about the spiritual gifts and we should only earnestly desire them, especially that you may prophesy, is what he said. We should all desire and seek the gift of prophecy. Not just this one, but especially this one. And then like a child wanting a particular thing for Christmas, a small child wanting a particular thing for Christmas, they're excited they might get what they want. Like a child approaching Jesus, we should approach God and be excited that our Heavenly Father knows how to give good gifts. There's no point in going to him and saying, God, give me gifts, but not really expecting or believing that he's going to do it. The first passage that I read said that he's going to do it. That was the words of Jesus. Go up to him excitedly and expect, expectantly. Lord, I want the gift of prophecy. Lord, I want a gift of knowledge or word of knowledge for this person. I want a gift of faith for this person, whatever it might be. Go up to him and expectantly receive. You know, a while ago I was struggling to understand what prophecy actually meant and I did some research. I came to my own conclusion and definition. I have shared this before. But prophecy, the de definition conclusion I came to is that prophecy is to receive a revelatory, revelatory message from God which never contradicts scripture but is used for the upbuilding, encouragement and c consolation of the intended recipient. I'll read it again. Prophecy is to receive a revelatory message from God never contradicts scripture but is used for the upbuilding, encouragement and consolation of the intended recipient. This may be stating what is going to happen, but a lot of the time it's specifically designed to build someone up with a message from God, including when it comes from direct from Scripture. But it's something that God wants to have, some, have someone take notice of. What a great thing, though. To be able to build each other up from our relationship with God we can hear what he's saying we can receive it we can pass it on to others if it's intended for them and help build them up in the Lord sometimes they're for us sometimes they're for others and you know there's lots I mentioned about Pete before, but there's lots of other people who are serving in the kingdom diligently. Whether it's in this church or somewhere else. And we all have a role to play. The Holy Spirit will determine when to give you the gifts and whom to give them to. That's up to him. There are other church, others in our church who serve week in and week out, day in and day out. There are too many to mention. But Pastor Rob and Carol go through a lot for this church and both demonstrate and use gifts from the Spirit and have been for years. Pastor Janet likewise. And in Paul says too that when he came to them, so when I came to you brothers, did not come proclaiming to you the testimony of God with lofty speech or wisdom, for I decided to know nothing ex among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and much trembling and my speech and my message were not plausible words of wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power 
so that your faith... Hmm. Anyway, demonstration of spirit and of power. So, I have this one here. So that your faith might not rest in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. These examples that I've mentioned are just what's happening in the church. Do you know that God give, gives good gifts to everyone as they ask and as they have faith for? And get those gifts can and should be used here in the church as well as outside of the church. Those gifts are to be unwrapped and used to their full potential to bring into the kingdom, bring more people into the kingdom. They are to build up the church and this encompasses bringing people into the kingdom. We should, we can and should receive gifts but Jesus said, also said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. We need to give gifts to others from God. Eternal life, eternal life would be the best gift that we can give anybody. From Jesus. But there are other spiritual gifts that we are to desire and that help people get there. Over time, I have inadvertently or even consciously spoken into someone's life or situation. And when I have, sometimes you experience that peace and the joy that results in that blessing. I haven't done it nearly enough, but I am a work in progress. Recently, I was talking to someone who is moving house soon and has to move within two months as their landlord is wanting the house back. To some of us, this story might sound familiar. This is someone else, though. They don't know where they are going. And, of course, with that comes the worry and the stress of what's going to happen. So I shared a, the testimony of Megan and Jamie. And that's on one of the recordings from a while ago, if you want to hear it. But they were looking for a house in a similar sort of situation. They had to move out. And they were looking around for different houses, different, op different places to live, because their landlord wanted, them, wanted the house back, effectively. And the, the difficulty with, with them was that they are also building a house. So they weren't ready to move into the new house yet. And there was prayer, and there was searching, and they found a few places which all of which had an issue and a drawback but then they found a house that suits their situation it was easy to move into because it was right across the road and it was not a and it was an open-ended lease basically they don't have to stay in there for a minimum time so it was the perfect one for their situation before they move into the new house. God is good. And I shared this testimony with the other person. And I said, God is not a respecter of persons. Meaning that this, meaning that, that any blessing that he gives us is av available to everyone. And I said, God's got you and he's going to look after you. And he's done this before and he'll do it again. And I know this person is, is following Jesus. I know they're a Christian. And so that one was a, was a bit easier. But even then on their, their body language, their facial expression, they were so thankful that I spoke those words to them and that there was hope in that. And sometimes that's all it takes. 
It's a testimony about God or it's a word directly from God. Whatever it is, we can share those gifts with the people, with anybody. At this time of year in particular, the news likes to, sh- news likes to share stories about places and people giving gifts to those who might not receive them that often or at all. This is good. I, I like that. And I tell you, if there was more of that, I might watch the news. People have a heart to help others. And you'll see it, Christians or non-Christians, they have a heart to help others, of most people. And help others, in these cases, receive gifts who may not have received one in their life. Or very rarely. But when you see the joy and delight on their faces of someone who's receiving a gift and the Operation Christmas Child videos show this really well. When you see the joy that they have because they've received this gift, it, it can make you emotional. It makes me happy, of course, but emotional that they are experiencing love. How much more will gifts from God himself who knows how to give good gifts fill people with joy? We all have a calling and a mandate on our life to earnestly desire spiritual gifts, especially that of prophecy. But we all have that calling on us because it changes lives. So this Christmas, amongst everything else that's going on and all the gift-giving in the physical that's going on what if we gave someone a spiritual gift what if we got a a gift from God to give to someone and it was unwrapped and used to its full potential the change that it would bring to the person who receives it as well as to you will be noticeable. It's like the gift that keeps on giving. Lord, you have blessed us with every spiritual blessing. And Lord, you want to give us your gifts. You want to give us gifts of this from the Spirit. You want us to ask you for them, receive them, and use them, speak them out, so that we may demonstrate the power of your Holy Spirit in people's lives. That we may demonstrate the power of your Holy Spirit in our lives. Lord, because this this is what you want to do and it works. Lord, we take you at your word. And Lord, we say that we receive the gifts that you have for us. Whether they be intended for us as the end recipient or for somebody else. Lord, I receive any gifts that you want to give us. The spiritual gifts. I ask, Lord, that you give us words of knowledge, words of prophecy. Gifts of faith, gifts of healing for everyone, for anyone that we might come in contact to who who needs it. Lord, guide us of what to do with them, but may we respond in faith, open them up, reveal them and use them to their full potential for your glory, Lord, and for the joy and peace 
in their life and they may see and know the living God. Because it's those sorts of things that opens people's eyes. It's those sort of things that can help remove the blindness and break down paradigms, break down walls because of the power of your spirit. Lord, may we hear from you, may we receive from you, may we give from you. Amen. I brought a word last week that the Lord has set before us an open door. And the Lord gave me some more insight into that during the week. It's an open door, it's a gate. Door or gate, doesn't matter. Matthew is talking about the gate of heaven, that we are the gate of heaven. The church is, the house of God is the gate of heaven. And that's backing up what you said there, Ben. But he gave me some insight into this door that's set before us. It's an invitation to step through. An invitation for us to step through from the physical realm into the supernatural realm. Because every time the gate or the door is mentioned in scriptures, it's, it's a transition point from the physical realm to the spiritual realm. A transition point where what Jacob saw was a transition point. It was a gate on the, on the boundary of two worlds, the natural world and the spiritual world, the, the supernatural world. Jesus said, I'm the door. No one can come to the Father except through me. He was saying, you can only come into the supernatural realm of the Father through me. But we have to make the step. We have to step through it. We have to, how do we step through it? We go to him and say, God, I want that. I want that gift. I want prophecy. I want, I want gifts of knowledge. I want those gifts. And my experience is that if you go asking for it, he's going to give it to you, okay? But when he gives it to you, you've got to act on it. Okay? You've got to act on it. If he gives you a message for someone, you've got to act on it. Okay? Because he won't give you another message for someone if you're not going to act on it and so the door is open already the door is open he's inviting us to step through amen amen, amen. amen. can i see all the communion leaders before you go after you yep. always like to have the pastor have the last say but I've been sitting on this. It's from the Amplified Bible, and it's uh, Romans 11:29, and it's to back up what Ben said. It says, "For the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable." So once you get that gift, it's irrevocable. He's not going to take it back. So he expects you to use that gift. <laughs> he doesn't change his mind about those who he gives it to. The gift of who he sends his call. So he's definitely calling. The gift's irrevocable. And he expects you to use it. It's just... Okay, thanks.